July in Dubai seems to be extreme opposite of Uttarakhand and the beautiful valley of flowers. This video is about the visit we made there in a time before Covid when travelling was much simpler. This trip was structured like this that we would all arrive in Dehradun in the middle of July and the next 7 days would take us to Valley of Flowers and back. Our first evening was in Haridwar. Being one of the holiest sites in Hinduism, it seemed only correct to respectfully immerse ourselves in the ambience of the holy place. On the next day, we started on our journey to Joshimath which is 300 km from Haridwar. It's a 10 to 12 hours journey by road and the travel took up most of the day but the route has a lot of scenic views throughout. One of the spot we passed is Deva Prayag, the spot where Bhagirathi and Alagananda rivers join together to form the mighty Ganga. Further upon journey we passed Rudra Prayag, another meeting place where Alagananda river joins with the Mandagini. And this evening, we reached Joshimath and our stay was in nearby Auli. We had not researched about Auli and on waking up the next day, we were pleasantly surprised to see that our overnight stop was in a place of outstanding beauty, surrounded by oak forest with a panoramic view of the peaks of Himalayas at a distance. I still wish that we had known more and we would have had two more days in our schedule to spend exploring Auli and the places around. Continuing with our plans, the motorable road ends about 5 km from Auli and at Pulna village, we started on our 10 km trek to Gangaria. Today we would be climbing from 1500 meters above sea level to about 3000 meters. The weather was very pleasant and slightly sunny. The route was very scenic with its views of beautiful mountains, waterfalls, a river flowing below and a variety of less familiar birds above. The thing I did find difficult to get used to was what is left behind by the horses and mules that carry our fellow travelers. To be fair, the remnants are cleared promptly from our walking path but it is physically impossible to clear the molecules that linger in the air. A large part of our path is also the way to Hemkund Sahib, a pilgrimage site devoted to the 10th Guru of the Sikh religion, Guru Govind Singh. And it happens that July and August are also busy times on the pilgrim path. Horses and mules are essential in carrying up the more frail pilgrims on this journey, who would find the walk very difficult otherwise. It was interesting to read later that we hikers wouldn't be here if it weren't for the pilgrims. Every year after the winter snow clear up, Sikh devotees are hard at work repairing, making the common path ready for the pilgrims and also for us touristy hikers. Maybe in future, a walking path can be made separate from the horse path if the environment allows to spare the hikers with sensitive noses, but for now, it seems okay to share a road with the devout folks who make our journey possible. The evening of this day found us in Gangaria, where we had accommodations that were basic but comfortable. The next few days in the Valley of Flowers National Park were the most memorable days in the whole trip. The valley is a 3 km climb from Gangaria and is home to more than 500 flowering plant species. To name a few, they are Himalayan Blue Poppy, Cobra Lily, Wild Rose, Blue Primulas, Himalayan Flea Flower, Vajradanti, Multi-storied Moringa Longifolia and many more in the list. This gentle landscape was unknown to the world till 1931. Maybe it would not have ever been discovered if Frank Smythe and his fellow British mountaineers had not lost their way 
back from a successful expedition from Mount Kamath. At that time, the highest mountain that had ever been climbed. In the words of the discoverer, on a wet, cold, miserable monsoon day of 1931, the mountaineers were astonished to see the splashes of blue spread over the hillside and it was so intense that it lit up the hillside. Frank Smythe, the leader of the six mountaineers and a writer, photographer and botanist named this valley as Valley of Flowers. The trek to the valley is packed with refreshing and unforgettable sceneries of peaceful mountain, flowing water streams, chirping of birds and cold breeze and unpolluted air. After three kilometers of uphill walk, we enter the valley. The vast expanse of the valley is spread with different colored flowers and it looks like someone is maintaining a huge flower farm. One day in the valley is not sufficient to enjoy the entire scenery, so we spend two whole days exploring the valley and enjoying every bit of it. On the third day on our way back to Govindgad, we shortened our descent time from 6 hours to 10 minutes by taking a helicopter ride with an astonishing bird's eye view of the whole area. Rest of the day we utilized to have a quick visit at Badrinath and Mana. Again, the drive to Badrinath was very beautiful, rich with scenery. I wish we had little more time to explore Badrinath. Mana is the last Indian village from the border of India and China. Many traces of Hindu epic Mahabharata are visible in Mana. It is believed that Pandavas had passed through Mana during their final journey to heaven and there is a natural stone bridge called Bhimpul near river Saraswati. It's a huge rock formed as a bridge across river Saraswati. The legend is that when Pandavas were crossing the river on the way to heaven, mighty Bhim lifted a massive rock and placed it here to help his wife Draupadi to cross the river. After visiting Mana, we stayed overnight in Auli and next day back to our destinations with the visuals of Valley of Flowers still playing back in our memory, remembering every bit of it and happy memories are still with us with the same freshness even two years after of our journey. With that, we remember the words of Frank Smythe. There is something about the Himalayas not possessed by the Alps, something unseen and unknown, a charm that pervades every hour spent among them, a mystery intriguing and disturbing. Confronted by them, a man loses his grasp of ordinary things, perceiving himself as immortal, an entity capable of outdistancing all changes, all decay, all life, all death.